Well, if last week was all about Samsung Galaxy Unpacked and we brought you the latest and greatest from San Jose, this time we're back in Mumbai in the Tech Today studios and the conversation is all about these devices. The new OnePlus 12 lineup, the 12 and 12R, what are they all about? Let's unbox it and get right to it. Well, there you go, the OnePlus 12 and the OnePlus 12R shining in all its glory. But the OnePlus 12R will be on the Tech Today website and our social media platforms for this particular flagship review. Let's focus on the OnePlus 12. Now, the minute you take it out of the box, there's a bunch of things you see, obviously. You have that 100 watt charger, an A to C USB charging cable. What I like about the OnePlus 12 is that from a distance, it looks so much like the OnePlus 11. But the OnePlus 11 had gotten a lot of things right. So you don't fix what's not broken or something like that. I think that's been the philosophy for the OnePlus 12. And what I like about it is that it is unabashedly itself. In an age when smartphones are getting slimmer and slimmer, and there's so many design changes with every new edition of the phone, this is quite a bulky phone. Now we're reviewing the flowy emerald color with this sort of matte finish at the back, which kind of grows on you, honestly doesn't look like anything else in the market. So full marks for being iconoclastic and disrupting the space. But this seems a little bit too marbly for me. Perhaps not entirely my style, but what I can do is take this cover, a silicon case which is given in the box. And it's a very high quality silicon case, honestly. If I put it on, it looks really cool. It reminds me a lot of the OnePlus Open. And then it doesn't matter what the color is like. This is quite a premium case that they've given you in the box and that's what you have to appreciate about a value for money flagship. But when you come to pricing, that's where the OnePlus can genuinely obliterate competition for all the features that it has. Now, this is only about what the device looks like. It houses this three camera setup over here in this tuned by Hasselblad module. Now, this is the fourth generation of this Hasselblad partnership. And honestly, we'd started seeing the fruits of what this partnership was all about last year in the OnePlus 11 with the cameras over here. And this is pretty much a similar setup to what we've seen on their foldable, the OnePlus Open, which honestly was one of the best foldables we've reviewed on Tech Today and last year's top foldable as well. It's very similar, but in the front now, for the selfie camera, it's no longer a 16 megapixel. In fact, it's a 32 megapixel camera. What are the selfies like? Let me have a quick look while you guys are watching this. Okay, no unnecessary processing. It's done a fairly decent job. I don't know why people keep saying that they're not happy with the OnePlus camera system. At least in this well-lit scenario, it's getting the detail with the beard, with you know, the background, everything seems fine. You're obviously getting the Hasselblad branding at the bottom telling you that it's used this sort of lens, this sort of exposure. It's sort of common now with all these partnerships that are happening in the Android world. It's good to see that the Hasselblad partnership is not seeming like a gimmick. It's genuinely yielding good results with good color science on the OnePlus 12. Now, in terms of the rear camera module, which looks like a really cool dial sat at the top, very unique design that I've seen in these new OnePlus devices. And you have a three camera system. Now, first you have a 50 megapixel main camera, a 40 megapixel wide angle lens camera. And then you also have a 64 megapixel telephoto lens camera with 3x optical zoom. Now it's very confusing with all these new terms that they come up with, with AI and nitography and you know, all these things with photography, but you can actually effectively get a total 6x zoom on that optical lens within sensor cropping. It does a fairly decent job. We'll be posting some samples for you to see as well. The video, let's see what that's like. It seems fairly fine. But something that I'm not quite understanding is there's no 0.5x. So you're just restricted to 1x, 2x, 3x and 6x on video. I don't know if that's a settings thing, but that can be a game changer, especially for creators like me. We often want to grab as much of the scene as possible. And if you don't have that ultra wide lens working on the video mode, it can be, well, a little bit of a letdown. 
Now, if you shot all that awesome content, you'll want to watch it on a good screen. Or even if you want to watch something on an OTT app or on YouTube, well, that's when this device really shines through. Not just indoors, but even in uncontrolled, unregulated environments outside, in bright light. Sometimes you struggle with your devices. That's the specialty of this device. 4,500 nits of peak brightness. Mind-boggling. I haven't even heard of television sets coming with that level of brightness. So there's no chance whatsoever that you could be complaining about the brightness or visibility or legibility when you're reading stuff or you're consuming content on this. What is the screen like? It's a 6.78 inch LTPO display with Pro XDR and Dolby Vision support. They've kept that curved display at the bottom. Whether you like it or you don't, that is their design language. And honestly, it's very different from what everyone's doing. Everyone seems to be copying the iPhone. These guys have an identity of their own. Also, that punch hole design for the camera. Seems old school, but if it works, it's working. So all in all, a good display, good sound quality. Watching content on this device is amazing. But I have a device that I prefer watching content on even more than this or any other, well, standard smartphone in this design. And that happens to be the OnePlus Open. Now, if you're selling smartphones in India in 2024 and you've adopted a no-nonsense approach to break the clutter, like I think OnePlus has, then you need to back this up with good software and good hardware. We've been talking about the hardware, a bunch of other things. Well, this actually comes with this new technology called AquaTouch. Though it's just IP65 in terms of water and dust resistance, that's one level below IP68. But this AquaTouch technology is mind-blowing. If you're using any other device, say even your iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is, well, the ultimate flagship, and you have, well, a Mumbai monsoon which is bothering you. And if a bunch of droplets have formed on your device, then using the display is not that easy. What if you're coming out of a shower or you've stepped out of a room with air conditioning? There could be this sort of condensation on the phone, even if it's running water. This AquaTouch sort of technology that they're using on the OnePlus 12 will ensure, and this is their guarantee, that the phone is still usable. And we've been testing this and honestly have been very, very impressed. Well, a couple of years ago, everyone seemed to be worried that OnePlus was going to go the Color OS way or the Oppo way. Now, with some of these innovations that we've seen on the OnePlus Open and now on the OnePlus 12, we can safely say that these are features which will make your life a whole lot easier on Oxygen OS. So you can breathe a sigh of relief, take in that oxygen. I think the OnePlus 12 does a fairly decent job. And that flagship experience is not only about what's happening with Oxygen OS or some of these hardware features or some of these innovative new proprietary technologies like AquaTouch. It's also, well, for instance, 3D spatial audio. You're getting that on a device like this as well. Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. It is a flagship in its truest sense. And another thing Oxygen OS needs to do is ensure that the battery on this device is used efficiently. And that it does a stellar job at behind the scenes. This device, the OnePlus 12, comes with a massive 5400 mAh battery and it comes with fast charging. Super Wook, a 100 watt adapter. Well, with this 100 watt adapter, plug it into the wall and 0 to 100 in under 30 minutes. That's needed with this device and battery health as well is maintained with all these optimizations. They're giving you updates for a long time. Not as long as Samsung with the S24, but a fairly long time. Four to five years is a good amount of time for software and security updates. But when you're talking about battery performance, if this gives you over 18 hours on a single charge, you have fast charging. You also now have 50 watt wireless charging, but you have to use their adapter and stuff like that. Now we'll give you a verdict along with the pricing. But one small side note, this is the S24 Ultra. This is the OnePlus 12. A flagship, but a value for money flagship. A flagship supercharged with AI superpowers, but it is expensive. Before telling you the price, I'll tell you that this has no AI features or they're not even claiming to get into the AI game yet. This is a first mover and they've done a lot of cool things with AI. But this costs almost twice as much as the OnePlus 12. Okay, we'll give you the verdict with the pricing. If you're talking about this device, 12 GB with 256 gigs of storage will cost you 64999 and 16 GB of RAM and 512 gigs of storage would cost you 69999 With a bunch of discounts, you could get this anywhere between 60 to 65,000 rupees for the ultimate flagship in the OnePlus stable. If you're not buying a foldable, of course. 
But let me then give you a little bit of perspective before giving you the verdict. I told you this is unabashedly themselves. They haven't settled, but they haven't really introduced a lot of AI features like the others as well. The others happen to be the biggest news from last week, Samsung Galaxy Unpack was all about Galaxy AI. This is the S24 Ultra, ready to take on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, a great device as well. You've seen our first impressions, you must have also read the review on Tech Today, but with AI superpowers, online and offline. And you might be tempted to purchase this device, but this costs almost twice as much as the OnePlus 12, which does a fairly decent job. But if a 1,30,000 or 140,000 iPhone Pro Max competitor is not in your budget, then I completely understand and you still want flagship performance. Maybe not the camera on these devices, but a fairly decent camera and very stable performance with a good software experience as well. That's where the OnePlus 12 comes in. Now, if you want to go even more budget and still get a bang for your buck, there's the OnePlus 12R. Now, the OnePlus 12R in terms of pricing, there's an 8GB RAM and a 128GB storage variant, which would cost you 39999 on the OnePlus 12R. And then you have a 16GB, 256GB variant, which would cost you 45999 Also a formidable device. But if you're considering this device, the flagship, I think this, like I said, is a practical flagship to buy here in 2024. But maybe in the next few months with software updates, there will be a bit of catching up to do with all the AI that's been spoken of. But in terms of hardware and software, I think this will be right up there at the top.